So, Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, the head of the table, apparently signed a new contract. Now, I haven't read the details of the new contract, but it's ironic that he signed this almost immediately after he did a promo in Trenton, New Jersey, saying whether or not he'll be back there again, and if not, he wants to thank the fans for coming out and supporting him. Kind of doing a babyface-like promo, even though he's a heel. Or anti-heel, whatever you want to call it. And the timing couldn't be more better, I guess, because obviously this got the attention of Vince. And Vince is like, oh, no, 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 brother. You ain't going nowhere. Here. Here's the next three million, three hundred million dollars you need for the next several years. Full time. Anything you want. There you go. And that's probably what happened. Now, again, I don't know the details. I don't know the details, but obviously... That promo he, caught in uh, he did in Trenton was enough to get WWE's attention. And it did. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. But now the question obviously is, if he's going to stick around for maybe another couple of years. Again, don't know the details. What is there left for him to do? Besides fight the rock. Maybe suffer a loss in between. At least lose one of the championships to... Let's say Cody, if you will, if that's the plan. What else is there for him to do? What else is there for him to do? I mean, let, let, let's look at Roman here, for example. Here's a guy that about a decade ago, well, literally a decade ago, it's going to be a decade, what, this November? A decade ago this November, since he made his main roster debut. Here's a guy that basically had to reinvent himself. He had to reinvent himself just to get over with the public. Here's a guy that when he was in the Shield with Rollins and Ambrose, Moxley, if you will, you know, the Shield got over. I mean, at first they were booed, but over time they got over because it was like, holy shit, we've never seen something like this before. This trio is great. We love them. You know, maybe they might help change the business. And then everything went to crap, basically. Everything went literally to crap about two years later about two years later, when they decided to break the shield up tempor for a while, then they reunited them. But when they broke them up, that's when things got really, really interesting because that's when, when you started to set both, all, I mean, not both, but all three out on their own. Rollins, Ambrose, Moxley, um, and Reigns. That's when things started to become more uh, clearer, I guess you could say, in the eyes of a lot of fans because they started to notice that more emphasis, even when the shield was going on, you know, but now that they were separated in 2014, more emphasis was being put on Roman and not, you know, and not Rollins or Ambrose. Even though Rollins, months after he betrayed the shield, won money in the bank and then cashed it in at WrestleMania, the emphasis was still on Roman. His storylines were the more important. Ambrose, he was still getting there. He was still building himself up. You know, so they were still focused on all three guys, but Reigns was the, the top tier out of the three. With a, you know, he was in the main event program or not, he was in the top tier. That was it. You know, so the, the, the writing basically was on the wall. The writing was on the wall that Roman was the guy. And fans started to notice a similarity to another guy that had been done or had similar treatment done to him. That was, of course, John Cena. And they didn't want this. They did not want this. They wanted Roman to basically earn it the way they wanted him to earn it. They wanted him to get in there and instead of doing five, six moves of doom or whatever, they wanted him to get in there and wrestle. Wrestle for 30 minutes and probably went by a roll up and, and probably win, a, win, I should say, by like a roll up or whatever so that they could chat, this is awesome, and then they could chat, this is wrestling. That's what they wanted in truth. It's like, honestly, they had no problem with Roman being, getting a push if that was the plan, but let him get the push the way they saw he should be getting it. And that was basically let him wrestle for it. Let him wrestle, not you know, John Cena it, let him wrestle for it. Or let him be something that obviously is true to who he is. Let him be himself, if eventually you could do that. 
And guess what? The moment he took his ball and he went home for a while because, you know, he had just recovered from a second battle with leukemia. The moment he came back, what was it, like five months later? It was summertime was August. He left around, what was it, March? So about March, March, April, May, June, July. So yeah, about five and a half months later, he comes back and he becomes the Roman Reigns that not only we the fans have been wanting, but obviously deep down he had been wanting. And he has not looked back since. He has not looked back since. He has been the Roman Reigns that will do whatever it takes to succeed and to retain his status as the guy, as the tribal chief, as the head of the table. He has done everything from top to bottom. He has beaten everybody that's been in his way. Whether he's had to cheat or he's done it cleanly, he's beaten everybody. I mean, he even did it last night at Backlash. I don't, you know, he even did it last night at Backlash, I think. You know, he won for his team. So, obviously, with him signing a new contract, ironically, after saying that promo, you know, in Trenton, again, the question is, what's left for him? What is left for Roman to accomplish? You know, again, there is the possibility he's going to probably lose one of the championships, probably the WWE championship, more likely, to Cody um, after Money in the Bank, most likely at SummerSlam. He might lose it to Cody, more likely at SummerSlam, and then be left with the Universal title. And then both USA and Fox get back what they wanted originally, and that's separate champions, sep you know, separate champions for the rosters, individual rosters, whatever. So there's a good chance that his, own, his only loss between, between when he returned at SummerSlam in 2020 to SummerSlam of 2022, his only loss will be to Cody. And that will be it. And then he'll continue being on God mode, especially for SmackDown, head of the table, travel chief of SmackDown, and then that's going to build to The Rock. So if there's, any going to be, if there's going to be any kind of obstacle in his way, it's going to be Cody. But that's only because Cody's got to be the champ over on Raw. So they have to give, he has to drop the title that somehow. He has to drop the title somehow. But even so, with that one blemish, what else is there for him to do over on SmackDown? Who are you going to bring in? Are you going to bring in Braun Breaker to face him? Is that what you're going to do? Are you going to bring Braun Breaker in or up, call Braun Breaker up to face him? Are you going to have Alma, Omos, you know, drafted over to SmackDown later on this year if there's a draft? And Omos, along with MVP at his side, challenges Roman? You know, what's left besides Drew and Cody? Nothing. Nothing is left for him. So however long this new contract is, they better make it worth it. They better make it worth his time. And they better have opportunities and opponents and stuff lined up for him. Because, again, after The Rock and after he drops one of the championships, mostly the WWE title, what's left? Who's to say? But let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think is left for Roman? And I'm out.